turn this photo into this in Affinity Photo and Topaz Dinoes AI. Hey guys, welcome to another geeky tutorial. This is a video to prove you that actually I took the photo and how dark was it at the time that I took and I had no choice but taking the photo, pumping my ISO to 6400 and had to put the aperture up about f4 or 5 I think just to make sure that everything is in focus. And of course now I have a challenge to recover a ISO 6400 underexposed photo to a sellable photo. So let's jump into the tutorial right now. So as you saw already, so this is our original photo. So again, the photo is taken with the Canon 70D ISO 6400 with f4. Now, this is a recipe of disaster. When you have high ISO photo with the old camera and underexposed, I mean, only thing you need probably is luck. In this case, we're going to use Affinity Photo in collaboration with Topaz Dinoise AI. So this is 100% cropped. As you can clearly see that you almost probably gonna lose hope just by looking at it. So open Affinity Photo, first of all, obviously. Then go to the developer persona. Now this is where the important part is. What I can do, you make sure, only thing you'll do is add enough color noise reduction to get rid of all the color noise but make sure everything else remains zero so all the luminous noise reduction and contribution remains zero except just the color noise that's it this is the important step and then obviously go to the lens correction and do your typical lens correction make sure there is no distortion leave it default don't worry about it too much because wasting too much time here is just useless generally the lens is already good as you can clearly see the lens is 70 to 200 f4 uh, this type of lens tend to be pretty well corrected already. Do your typical exposure correction because remember the original photo was underexposed so add just enough exposure and uh, contrast, vibration and white balance to make sure that it looks well corrected. Don't do overdo it, do just enough to make sure that your dark area is nice and not crushing and the bright area is not crushing either it's nice curve this is a perfect histogram i didn't show you exactly because obviously each photo has their own kind of correction so this correction for this photo doesn't apply with everything else so just make sure your histogram looks correct that's all matter now click develop it's going to take some time to develop it and there you go now you're in the layer mode make sure when you're in the layer mode immediately create a duplicate by clicking ctrl j in windows i think in mac is command j and then go to the filter and then from the filter you go to topaz lab and denoise ai this will give you a prompt takes about few seconds to open the denoise ai and boom you are there and by automatically it has the auto mode right there as you can clearly see which gives you an initial result now it's up to you you like it or not make sure you zoomed in 100 percent to me hmm, can be better so what i did i went to the ai clear in the automatic mode it actually got worse so what i did i went back to denoise ai then i manually add 71 to remove noise enhance sharpness to 65 recover original details 31 and color noise reduction to 22 and the result looked phenomenal once it's done you click apply so once you click apply it will take you back to affinity photo now we have our photo the noise reduction applied on the duplicate layer this is a good news and we are off to a good start now this is the original photo and that's the corrected noise reducted photograph with topaz denoins ai and this is the original photo the blur area and that's after the noise reduction with topaz denoise ai and now do again Control j or command j to create a duplicate layer and this is where you're going to do all your artistic editing meaning the color the saturation the contrast and so on you already have a perfectly well exposed clean photo so sky is the limit from now on you actually have done and seen everything when it comes to how to reduce noise in affinity photo using topaz denoes ai from now on this is how i want for this photo so if you want to still continue follow along so i'm going to go to the high pass go to the live filter and then click high pass and immediately the whole screen going to turn gray obviously because this is what it does with the high pass filter there is no exact number 
What I want you to do, when you add hypers filter, once you start to see a shape, just about stop. Don't overdo it. Just enough is more than enough. Just remember, repeat after me. Just enough is more than enough when it comes to sharpening. Because once you add too much, this is what happens. And it's just going to go sideways, ugly and disgusting. Then change the blend mode. Go to the blend mode and change the blend mode to soft light. I personally prefer soft light for high pass filter. And then again, go to the adjustment layer and click curves. So we're gonna add, we're gonna work on our contrast. In contrast, w once the adjustment layer is open, we're gonna work on those two area. So what are we trying to do? Add some contrast in the shadow area when not touching the mid tone and the high light area because we don't want to clip anything. The reason why we're not going to clip anything because the head of the birds are already white. I mean, this is just the limit. After that, it's just going to look flat. You want to see a little details like those curves, beautiful, nice curves. You want to see them. Another tips, this is my personal favorite. Go to the blend mode and then change the blend mode from normal to luminosity. The reason why every time you're going to add contrast is only going to work in luminosity or in the brightness while without touching the saturation or color. And then as I said, we are going to work on the lower part. So I'm going to up the shadow area just a little bit while pulling down the lower mid-tone area. Immediately, you have this little contrast there. And I just added a couple of dots right there to make sure that they are untouched. This is important step right there. You see that, like uh, if you cannot see, I made a couple of circle to make you see exactly where I added my couple of dots. The reason why I added two of them instead of one, because if you add one, this is going to move. So you have to always have to add two or more dots to make sure that they don't move. And this is before the contrast and after contrast. So before and after, before and after. Now we're going to go to the adjustment layer again and open a vibrance. And once the vibrance is open, we're going to go to the blend mode and then change it to color. Again, just like in the curve, we're going to do opposite. So we're going to work on color because of course you're going to work on saturation. But problem is every time you add saturation in normal blend mode, it also affects the luminosity. So we're going to protect the luminosity, only going to work on the light and add just about enough saturation to make it look vibrant. Then select all the adjustment layer, put them in the group by control G or command G. I just decided to bring my original photo so that I can show you exactly how far you have come from the previous one. So this is our original one. Can you believe that? My goodness. And that's after. Boom. Again, before, after. Take your time before and after. This is 100% zoom to the eye before and after. Incredible amount of details. Look like photo is taken in a broad daylight with ISO 100. And this is the blur area. And after all of our adjustment, look natural, clean, vibrant, not a single distortion or weirdness. So just to remind you, this was our original photo right there. Only thing we had to do is to do some adjustment in Affinity Photo, do the noise reduction in Topaz Denoise, and we had our result. And this is my friend, how you follow your workflow with Affinity Photo and Topaz Denoise. If this video helped you, your support means a lot. And without your support, this channel do not exist. So please do support me. Like and subscribe, comment in the comment section below if you have any kind of ideas, suggestions. I'm more than happy to listen. Most importantly, look after yourself and bye-bye.